The San Antonio Spurs won the Victor Wembanyama sweepstakes by securing the number one overall pick in the 2023 NBA draft. But the Charlotte Hornets, they have the opportunity to select another franchise changing talent with the number two overall pick. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Scott Proctor. You know the deal by now. This is Proctor's point of view. Make sure you drop a like, make sure you comment and subscribe. And if you do comment, keep an eye out and beware because it could be featured in a future video like this one right here. And I gotta address this one right here by a user named Steven talking about, I don't know what's going on with Jordan Poole in the Warriors. Was I wrong or was I right? Talk to me now. How you feel about your Golden State squad right now? I try to tell you, man, Proctor POV, I'm giving you the real right here every single weekday. Don't doubt it. But stay tuned to the end of this episode right here, though, to see if you can guess which NBA franchise has the most number two overall picks. But to this topic right here, the Spurs, they land another generational prospect in Victor Wembanyama after drafting David Robinson, number one overall in 87. And then obviously Tim Duncan, number one in 1997. That obviously means there will be no drama for the top pick in this year's draft like there was last year. But there's plenty of uncertainty surrounding who will go number two overall to the Charlotte Hornets. But there shouldn't be. Alabama's Brandon Miller could be the guy at number two because of his 6'9 frame with a sweet shooting stroke to go along with some elite handles. He averaged 18 and eight for the Crimson Tide last season while shooting 38% from deep. He has a Brandon Ingram type of game in the ceiling, if you ask me. And while many people think Brandon Miller should be the wing compared to LaMelo Ball in the backcourt for the Hornets, I strongly disagree. First off, the Hornets, they have a couple talented wings and veteran Gordon Hayward and a 24-year-old P.J. Washington who's coming off a career year in terms of scoring on the books for next season. Not to mention, Miles Bridges, he will be back. I know you might have forgot about him. After serving a little 10-game suspension to start next season, he will be back. And we just saw him last time he was on the court. That man was averaging 20 and 7 a game. But the biggest reason why Mr. Scoot Henderson should be the Hornets guy at number two overall in July's draft is because he got that dog in him. Point blank theory as it chiseled a strong six foot two, 195 pounds. Scoot lives at the rim. The man averaged 18. Five and seven for the G League Ignite Scoot and Wimbenyana, the projected number one overall pick, actually faced off in October. You gotta go check out those highlights. And Scoot, hey man, he put it on him, man. He put his elite skills, his elite talent on display against the number one pick in the draft. Scoot dropped 28 points, five rebounds, dropped nine dimes as his G League Ignite team actually got the win over Wimbenyana's Metropolitan's 92 squad. Simply put, Scoot, that man is a future star in this league, and his strength, his athleticism, it's the perfect pair for LaMelo's elite playmaking, elite shooting. LaMelo, Scoot, Miles Bridges, P.J. Washington, and your choice of a big man at the five spot. That's a, that's a nasty little lineup right there, and that gives the Hornets a real chance to compete in the Eastern Conference. But to today's trivia question that I posed at the top of this episode, can you guess which NBA franchise has the most number two overall picks in NBA draft history. It's the Grizzlies who have picked at number two overall five times in franchise history. Mike Bibby and of course, John Miranda, the only notable one selected there at number two overall. And with the latest news surrounding my boy John Morant, we hope the Grizzlies don't soon regret that decision. And remember, Ja, remember what I told you on last weekend in sports earlier this week, man, stop listening to NBA Youngboy, man. Thank me later. But that's going to do it for this episode of Proctor's Point of View. We'll catch you right here tomorrow, same time, same place. See you then. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out our other videos and don't forget to smack that subscribe button down below while you're at it. Also, for more great and original content, head right over to bbmsports.com.